So this is day two of our practice specifically for session. So we'll go a little bit further. I do want to start with the warm ups as we did yesterday, but we'll go through them a little more quickly. And especially, I want to do the leg warm ups. So, as you recall, you may recall, you might want a wall. And I'm using a different computer, so the camera angle is, seems a little bit better. And if you need to use the wall or some other support, please do. And we're going to do ankle swivels, whichever foot, put your best foot forward. And swivel in one direction. And again, timing with the breath inherently makes movement contemplative. Another direction. So an inhale gets me about two swivels, exhale the same. And also, let's see if we can really drop our attention down to the hara. And follow the breath from there, especially when we're working towards the floor. Should be a little easier to do that. And let's do some foot extension and flex. Exhale, extend, inhale, flex, maybe. Other foot. So you might feel the pelvis like a bowl that holds a ball. And that's one of the other ways to work with a hara. It's as though it's a ball, another direction, that rests in the pelvis. It goes roughly from the perineum up to the solar plexus. And on the inhale, we're filling that whole region. 360, top, bottom, front, back, side to side. On the exhale, we keep some of that expansion. Okay, so some flex and inhale. So see if you can feel that. Let the whole lower abdomen inflate on the inhale. And on the exhale, see if you can not collapse the whole lower abdomen, but keep some of that feeling all the way around. It's a nice feeling when you can feel the breath in the lower back. At the sides, it also releases some of the tension there in the lower back. Okay, so we're gonna do knee circles. <laughs> You might want to be just above the knees. So I'm inhaling, exhaling. So again, about two circles for an inhale, two for an exhale. Other direction. And the heart is also the center of gravity. That whole ball area isn't, that's the whole hara region, but the hara is center of the body, a couple inches below the navel. So it's the center of that ball. And when we're moving, perhaps you can feel it because it's our center of gravity also. Okay, get circles. This one, you should really be able to feel that region. This is a good opportunity to get that somatis, som, somatic feeling going. Somatization, maybe it is, other direction. Actually, let's just pause for a minute and see if we can feel that 
feet parallel, firmly rooted, knees are not locked. If you tend to have a little bit of a sway back, you might want to tilt your pelvis in the other direction as though you had a dinosaur tail maybe hanging from the back. And let's see if we can get that feeling of maybe it's the size of a soccer ball inflating on the inhale. The heart is at the center, but the belly releases and goes out, the lower back releases and goes out, sides release, go out. And on the exhale, obviously they're going to contract a little, but how much of it can we keep while still doing a few exhales? I mean, while still doing a full exhale, I mean to say. And the other point about the hara, which I didn't get time to mention during the talk today was that particular Rinzai method is to also do a little very slight upward lift at the perineum, which is the lowest point of the abdomen. And there's kind of a natural lift. It tends to come with the exhale. And it's okay if you just do it on the exhale and release on the inhale, or you could work towards just keeping that slight lift. It's not a tension. It's a very slight pulling upward that helps contain that energy. And this is a known Rinzai technique that they use. And I find it's, put all these things together, it gives a little more, significantly more power to the heart. So let's see if we can keep some of that feeling. And let's go to the arm swings like we did last time. And you might remember that when we swing in this direction, this foot points that way. When we swing in this direction, the foot turns out that way. Not that it lifts, I'm just looking to show you. So let's inhale. Well, time it however feels good for your body. And it's also a Qigong thing that your hand behind strikes the adrenals, not fiercely, but gives a little, little encouragement. And the other hand slaps the lung points, which are right between your collarbone and shoulder. That's meant to bring up lung and kidney damage. And let's see if we can really let those arms swing loosely. Okay, and slowing down as you're ready. Okay, so let's do shoulders forward with that curl in the spine and the lift in the chest, curling forward. Exhaling, inhaling. If you know the cat-cow move, which we're actually gonna do in a few minutes, it's the same thing, it's just standing, but it's a little, it's a little different, more inclusive of the shoulders. You might think about extending the neck. Basically, we're always extending the neck when we can, especially the back of the neck. And oftentimes that involves tucking the chin and just see if you can get a feel for it. Okay, now the other way. Inhaling, chest expands, exhaling, we go forward. Inhaling, chest expands, exhaling, go forward. Shoulders come up, shoulders go down. Find your own way into it. 
once you've got the movement, see if you can relax into it. We're going to do a little less on the warm up today. Um, I would like to do just some shoulder circles a few times forward. You can also experiment with doing these arms extended if you prefer. It's a little easier to get that opening in the chest and the shoulder blades coming together, but either way is okay. Basically lifting and opening in the chest makes the back straighter and more upright. Again, keep attention on the neck, tuck the chin to extend the back of the neck if it feels like it's gathering tension of a direction. Again, feel free to do it this way. Inhaling chest opens, exhaling round a little bit. You don't have to match my pace because I'm talking, that makes me breathe more quickly. You might go slower and that's fine. Listen to your body and please don't do anything your body says no to. Okay, let's shake everything out. You remember our little rattling the bones Qigong dance from yesterday? Just any way the body wants to move. Doesn't have to be as vigorous as this. Just do what feels right for your body. I'm used to doing it, so I'm pretty vigorous with it. Okay. You may recall our upward reach from yesterday. I'm gonna do a few of those. Begin with hands and gasho. Take a breath here. As we exhale, arms drop. Inhaling, hands come up. Exhaling, hands come down. Back to Anjali, Mudra or Gasho. Inhale, exhale. At your own pace, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, inhale on the lift. If you want to add a little bit of a back bend, if it's good for your body, you can. If your neck likes to go backwards and that feels good, then please do so. If not, please don't. Okay, this next time as we did before, we're going to link the hands like so, fingers. As we inhale, the palms are gonna come up and face the ceiling. Pull the navel in towards the lower back to protect the lower back. And breathe. It's fine to look straight ahead. It's fine to look up if that feels good for your neck, but think about extending the neck, not clenching the back of the neck. Actually, don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> Arms really stretch up. If a little bit of a back bend feels good, great. Breathing. And then exhale, arms come down, shake them out. I want to do a little bit of a side bend, but I want to do it a little differently today. So we'll return to that basic stance, feet parallel. And this time we're gonna grab, in my case, this is my left arm, grabbing my, my left hand, grabbing my right arm, although I think it looks opposite on the screen. And we're gonna lift up again, pulling the belly in towards the lower back, towards the spine, to protect that engaging the core. Exhale over to one side, pulling on that arm. 
extending the spine, breathing, take a few breaths, come out of it anytime. If it feels good to turn the chest a little towards the ceiling, you could try that, keep that belly engaged. Okay, I'm gonna exhale, come out. We shake out arms and neck. And take a breath and we'll do the other side. Belly comes in, navel goes towards the spine, exhaling over, pulling on that left arm. So we're getting a stretch all the way down the left side, as well as in the shoulder, breathing. Keep that core engaged. If it feels good to look up at the ceiling, okay. Okay. You ready? Release on an exhale. Shake out. There's another couple of things in the standing position I'd like to show you. All of which are good for the shoulders and upper back. Please don't overdo, you can go a little further towards your edge today, towards your full range of motion, but only if you can remain aware in your body and don't overdo it. It's better to underdo a little. So for this one, on an inhale, we're gonna reach up. On an exhale, these are cactus arms. Palms are facing forward. And again, we're going to lift the chest, pull the shoulder blades together as much as is comfortable, pull the navel in towards the spine. This is chest opening and back releasing. If it feels good, you can look up towards the ceiling. If it doesn't, please don't. Shoulder blades pulled together, breathing. Once you've got the pose, see if you can release excess tension, excess doing. You can experiment with whether the elbows go forward or back, what feels better to your upper back, and release. Shake them out. So another good one for stretching the shoulders in the other direction is, in this case, my left arm goes up. I know it looks like my right one. My other one comes underneath it. And this hand wants to meet that palm, but it can be as approximate as is possible for your body. Obviously, we're stretching the shoulders together across the chest, broadening the back. And you can adjust the stretch by lifting the elbows, tilting the upright arms away or close, whatever works, and breathe. Again, it's good to engage that core, navel towards lower back. You can tilt the pelvis backward as though you had that giant tail if you're tending to get sway back in some of these poses that protects the lower back as well. Releasing excess effort, excess doing. Reminding yourself of the relaxation response on the exhale. It's easier to let go on the exhale. And release, shake them out, we'll do the other side. And again, whatever approximation works for you. Don't forget the navel, the reports the lower back. Knees aren't locked. They can be a little bent if that feels good. And we're just breathing into the area that's being stretched. So on the inhale, the air is going in there, and on the exhale, the whole area is being released. 
And the next thing in LC, if we can keep that sensitivity, the next exhale will lose more. Once we've got this position, it doesn't take much muscular effort to hold it. It's the only thing you lose. Is it holding in the face, the neck, the hips, the thighs? Use that exhale. Can come out anytime, always. But if you haven't yet, let's exhale again. Shake it out. Okay, just another couple of ways to open the chest and to release the shoulders, release the upper back. The simple version is both arms are at the side. If you can reach across with your other arm and grasp just above the elbow of the arm that's straight, you can do that. And then it's the same thing on an inhale. We're lifting the chest, bringing shoulder blades close together, not overdoing. You want a comfortable stretch. If it's okay for your body, bring the other arm up and do it like this. With both arms. That's a more full position. And that one feels pretty good on the inhale. The whole chest expands front of the shoulders. And the exhale, shoulder blades pull together. Still bringing navel towards the spine. Still keeping pelvis level. If you want to look up and it's okay for your neck, feel free to do so. It's entirely optional. If we're ready, release and exhale. Let's come down to the floor to tabletop position that is on all fours. And we're going to do the famous cat-cow sequence. I'm sure a lot of you know it, but in case you don't, the way it works is this is the cow and that's the cat. We inhale into cow, exhale to cat. Inhale, exhale, see if you can. move the stretch into the part of your back that needs it. These don't have to be too intense. They can be easy. We're just really wanting to loosen up unless you're used to it, in which case you could stretch more fully. If your back or shoulders is hurting already, are hurting already then you want to be more conservative. It doesn't necessarily help to overstretch if you're already suffering. In fact, it can make it worse. So you're better off softly warming up the area, letting the circulation do its work. I want to show you a quick relaxation. It'll take about three minutes. It comes from our friends in the Vipassana tradition. It's a quick body scan, head to toe. I encourage you to do this often. Maybe even at the beginning of every zazen, if, you're, if your body's hurting, or at least until your body really feels relaxed. When we say, Zazen somatic, we don't mean it's somatic, clenched up, painful somatic. We, we want it to be relaxed, inhabiting the body. Yeah, sure, things will ache a little bit and get tired, and our muscles, but we're much better off if we make friends with the body right from the beginning. 
relax as much as we can right from the beginning. So might help to have the palms up on, on the knees. If you're using a chair or sitting bench, it doesn't matter. You can sit however you want. And we're going to imagine that because of Zazen, we each have a halo above our heads. And it's golden or white light. But unlike a conventional halo, it has, the light goes all the way across the center. So it's really more of a frisbee of light. And it's hovering a few inches below our, above our heads, sorry. And what's gonna happen is with every exhale, we're going to lower it a little ways down the body. <clears throat> I'll talk us through how that works. <clears throat> and it's like a net that clears out your energy channels, clears out residual tension in the muscles, and it just sweeps it downward <clears throat> until eventually it'll come to the feet and carry that out of the body. So the way it works is we'll inhale, and on the next exhale, Going to lower this down over the crown of our heads, down over the top of the forehead, down the scalp, maybe about as far as the temples, carrying away any tension from the forehead temples. On the inhale, it pauses. If you feel like there's still tension in the forehead or temples, then on the inhale, it lifts a little bit to go over that area again. And it's really just bringing attention to these areas. And we just touch them with the mind and see if they're ready to release. Some things may release, some may not. We're just releasing what's ready to go. And whatever we get will be an improvement. So again, exhaling the sacred frisbee lowers over the eyes, eye sockets upper cheeks, upper nose, over the ears, back of the skull, maybe down about to the upper lip, sinuses. On the inhale, it pauses, or if you want to go over an area again, it lifts. Next exhale, this disc of light passes over upper jaw, back of the skull, sides of the neck, upper palate, teeth, lower jaw, tongue. Top of the neck, maybe traveling down almost to the base of the neck where it meets the shoulder. Inhaling, lifting up if you want to run over the neck again each vertebra, but this time as it reaches the shoulders, it magically transforms from a frisbee to a kind of a hula hoop thing, except again, it's continuous across the center, a big disc of light. Exhaling, it passes down over the shoulders, collarbones, upper shoulders, top of the scapula, shoulder joints, upper arms, down to the breastbone in front and part way down the thoracic spine and back. Pausing, lifting if you want. Feel free to skip or avoid any part of the body that you feel particularly vulnerable about or that you don't want to touch with your mind. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes a part of the body's been hurt. You don't have to go there. In any case, exhaling down, with this lowers over the mid back, bottom of the scapula, lower part of the sternum, the ribs, mid back, 
the upper internal organs, what's up there, the liver, the spleen, gallbladder, the stomach, pauses where it feels right, inhale. Exhale down, lower spine, belly, really releasing the belly, because as in the belly should be released to let the diaphragm drop deeply into the body. Now we're going through that horror region. Is there any tension there? Lower back, sacrum, navel area, lower, lower belly, pelvis, hip joints. Pause for an inhale. Lift if you wanna pass over that area again. Exhaling down the thighs, hamstrings, femur, big bone of the thigh. We tend to hold a lot of tension there, even though we don't need to hold up our legs when we're sitting, and that causes a lot of knee pain. Might be worth going over again. And then inhale, let's lift up again and see on the exhale, passing that net of light, disc of light down, can we carry the tension or some of the tension out of the thighs, hamstrings, over the knees, down the shins and calves to the ankles, pausing for an inhale. On an exhale, it's going to pass from the ankles, heels, arches, all of the foot, out the toes, and it just vanishes into the ground, grounding out any tension, any blockage. You want to take a breath or two to just maybe do a quick one or two breaths check in to see if there's anything left over. You can pass the disc down more quickly. It works at any speed. Works better slowly, but see if anything else got overlooked, wants to let go. Let it drain out into the earth. And we ran a little bit over, for which I apologize. But I uh, really wanted you to learn that quick technique for settling the body, I hope you'll use it. Give it a try. And I will see you in the Zendor.